Bill Hambrecht is a star of the venture capital universe who helped usher in the high-tech age by investing in and underwriting in Apple, Genentech, and other high flyers. He later formed W.R. Hambrecht, which has co-managed auction-style IPOs for 20 U.S. companies, including Google and Morningstar. He joins us now to discuss the current IPO market and football. However, Bill, I want to ask you a quick question before we get to IPOs, which is this. Steve Jobs, you know him well. You underwrote the Apple offering. Right. Obviously, he has been ill. He was not at the Apple Developers Conference this week. Your opinion, how successful can Apple be if it did not count on the resources of Steve Jobs? Well, you know, I think Steve is a very unique guy. I, I've never seen anybody uh, who can integrate uh, a lot of different technologies and come up with a product. I mean, he, he's the best at it. And, and so clearly they'd, they would miss him, of course. Uh, but Apple now, you know, is a big company. They've had a lot of talent. He's attracted a lot of talent to the company. So, uh, you know, is he indispensable? I doubt it. But, boy. <laughs> He's a unique talent. No question. Let's talk for a moment about IPOs. You have gone up against the heavyweights in the industry. You've made your name at W.R. Hambrick doing this. But with the financial crisis, the big firms have only got bigger. Uh, of course, they're going to be more tightly regulated. But there's, is there, in your opinion, more potential now than ever before for oligopolistic pricing? Well, the concentration of the big firms, of course, the, the, the business is going to be in fewer and bigger hands. But it's also a lot of transparency. Electronic trading, technology has made markets very transparent. And I think transparency is what really drives prices down. And well, that's what makes it efficient. Now, given the fact that we have so few distribution networks left, right? Smith Barney just merged with Merrill Lynch, uh, with, with Morgan Stanley, excuse me. Does that make, though, the auction model perhaps a bit more compelling? I think so. Yeah, I, I mean, you, you want to get out into all the distribution channels. Uh, uh, we use uh, all the major electronic brokerage firms. Uh, yeah, I, absolutely. D does this change the size of deals you can do? It seems like if you're on the electronic system, the deals almost have to be smaller because the big gorillas are taking the big deals. No, you know, the, the interesting thing of the 20 some odd auctions we've done, the biggest ones are the ones that work the best. And, and any auction person will tell you that, you know, to get, to get the best pricing, you want all the distribution, you want all the demand to come in one place and you can price it most efficiently. So the paradox that I've had to deal with is, is uh, it works best on biggest deals, yet my career has been basically doing smaller deals. I mean, that, we built Hembricht and Quist by being early in investing in companies like Genentech and Apple. I still love to do that. Uh, Bill, reform-minded bankers talk about a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity to correct the problems in the financial services industry. If it were up to you, what would you fix? I think I would separate uh, proprietary trading and leverage trading from the business of dealing with customers. You know, I think uh, if you're going to leverage and do aggressive trading, you really ought to do it in a hedge fund format and, and, and with money that knows what you're doing and money that's willing to take the risk. Uh, we're going to go to break in a second, but is it wrong that some of these firms are using public financing to do proprietary trading? Uh, that's an interesting question. Uh, uh, I, let me put it this way. I think uh, if they're taking undue speculative risk, uh, yeah, I, I don't think the government had that in mind when they put the tarp money out. All right, Bill, sit tight because we're going to come back in a couple minutes and talk about football, specifically the United Football League, when we return with Bill Hambrecht in just two minutes' time. Stay with us. We're back now with Bill Hambrecht, founder and chairman of W.R. Hambrecht, and he's also the founder of the United Football League, which begins play this October, which the timing of that, Bill, raises a question for me. Why October, November, the heart of the college and NFL season to put a third option out there? Well, first of all, uh, there have been other attempts to start new football leagues. And uh, we came to the conclusion, after looking at them all, that basically the American public wants to see football in the fall. I mean, it's cultural. And, and so uh, for us to put together a product that we think is going to be very good, uh, we have to bring it during the time when the public wants it. How about where your teams need to be? Obviously, this is a small league. How big do you expect it to get? Where do you think you can mine the fan base potential? Well, 
essentially the the thing that's driven this is the fact that the NFL is in about 28 of the top 50 markets in the U.S. and they really were formed in the 30s and the 40s and the 50s and so there's a heavy preponderance in the Midwest and, 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 the, and, and the Northeast and they really missed the whole demographic shift to, to the West Coast and, uh, and to a great degree. Can, can you break even by year three? That's what your commissioner has said. Just curious if you can make it. Oh, we hope to. Uh, you know, the, it's, it's a very different business model. Uh, it's based on the fact that there are lots of good football players. There's a huge supply of them that want to play, and we're giving them that opportunity to play. There's 22 of the top 50 markets in the United States that don't have a f home football team. I mean, you know, the New Yorkers will argue with you, but, you know, they're both over in New Jersey. Now, speaking of players who want to play, Michael Vick's name came up this week as a potential player for the UFL. How do you feel about that? Well, you know, look, look, first of all, he's a great football player, probably the best football player in America in terms of maybe not the best quarterback, but the best football player in America. Secondly, uh, hey, this is a country of second chances. He's paid his, he's paid his penalty. Uh, you know, I, I think what we did, of course, was go out to our fan base and said, what do you think? And, and uh, on our website, the majority people want to see him. People play. want to see him. People say he deserves a second chance. All right. All right. Well, we'll leave it with that. That's a, a very generous view. We thank you, Bill Hembricht <laughs> from WR Hembricht and the United Football League.